Well, a somewhat unusual way to start a microscopy video here. These are the pyramids in front of the Louvre in France. And uh, I visited France a few weeks ago and I collected some specimens for microscopy there. Look uh, here, <laughs> this is a worm that I found there. And uh, today I'd like uh, to take you through a short trip uh, through the places that I visited in France and where I collected uh, some of the specimens. Um, I'd like to put them under the microscope, of course, um, as always and not only that um, I'd like to have yeah a rating <laughs> how good are the specimens uh, that are collected um, yeah it was not always easy because transporting uh, those uh, uh, water samples that are collected uh, yeah was a problem sometimes but uh, I did find indeed a whole bunch of uh, fountains there that looked promising at the beginning and this actually was one of the hottest days <laughs> in in the year and uh, many fountains actually were dry um, but some of them were active uh, but unfortunately yeah, very clean very very clean um, so I was not really um, very hopeful in finding interesting microscopic specimens but um, a closer look revealed that on the side there was a little bit of stuff growing some green stuff some moss yeah here right here on the side and I decided to, to collect this and uh, put it into a tube to take it along home well uh, as I'm going to tell you later a little bit this was slightly a problem because uh, some of the specimens started to decrease compose over the days I made a mistake I sometimes um, added simply too much water so there was too little oxygen in the tube and this caused the specimen to become anaerobic and to decompose yeah so this was a mistake uh, we all learn from mistakes uh, but um, essentially um, I was uh, able to find a little bit of um, yeah yeah very undefined material after a few days um, so it was not a very good uh, and a very promising uh, specimen so I looked around a little bit longer and I found some parts of insects uh, like this one over here of course I do not know which insect it is but it is definitely an exoskeleton yeah and the odd rotifer Yes, uh, there were a few rotifers also present. The uh, biodiversity was not very high, so there were not so many species and uh, an occasional diatom. This here is now in phase contrast. And if you see all of those points um, around the diatom, these are bacteria that were collecting um, around uh, those algae that which produce oxygen. Yeah, and here look at this uh, this line. Uh, this uh, yeah, these are all bacteria, and uh, they start to move uh, towards the top. So they're moving collectively towards the place where there is more oxygen. It's all or something that I was uh, able to observe um, quite a, a few times already that microorganisms under the microscope slightly start to move into one direction um, a more favorable direction would be of course the place where there is uh, more oxygen yeah so again the video is looping over here and this is pretty much um, almost all that I found yeah the rotifer was one of the, those highlights and therefore I decided to give uh, the Louvre fountain one of three stars <laughs> okay uh, but uh, then again and I have to, I know I'm repeating myself, uh, the specimen was, specimen was a few days, days old and therefore, of course, uh, it's uh, quite conceivable that there was a change in the composition of microorganisms uh, that uh, has occurred over the days. Yeah, uh, one point um, out, of, uh, out of three points, uh, but um, the next one was a little bit better, okay? So look at this here. This here is the Seine, that's the river that runs uh, through Paris and um, I was able to see that there are yeah, many places, stairs going down all the way uh, to the river um, obviously for boats uh, so if people want to kind of get off there then yeah there is a place uh, to board the boat and I said wow that's a great uh, place uh, to go uh, to collect a water sample so it was uh, it was freely accessible I always take along a little box of uh, plastic tubes uh, to collect uh, specimen samples yeah there was of course also a boat passing by creating some waves and um, I was not very yeah I was not very hopeful here because uh, the specimen or the water I mean it looked kind of clean uh, sure but um, yeah I didn't see a lot of um, life there compared to, um, to um, yeah to a, a pond for example so I collected a small amount here about a two or one and a half to two milliliters of, of uh, water and some algae and um, this is uh, then something that I also put under the microscope yeah this is uh, the the bridge here um, and the name of uh, the road the bridge is called Notre Dame just like the church yeah over here let me quickly uh, pause this here uh, if you're able to see maybe um, there is a white 
dot uh, a, a white person widely dressed person directly on the stairs and this uh, guy was uh, actually cleaning the stairs with uh, w pressured water um, but it wasn't were not these stairs that I went down were different ones but there were many places yeah so they actually kept the place uh, quite clean yeah um here, that's me again, uh, collecting um, some um, of uh, the water um, here. Not only water, of course, you always want to take along some solid material. And uh, yeah, so there was some algae growing there. The waves already passed from the boat. <laughs> and uh, this is basically what I took along, hoping uh, to be um, successful here. And I was indeed quite successful um, because uh, it, I found out that there were quite uh, a lot of uh, microorganisms and also worms uh, living uh, living in, in, in this place. Yeah, I put a cap on top. Yeah, and uh, I left the tubes in a bright place uh, because, uh, yeah, I always wanted to make sure that there is uh, lots of photosynthesis going on. Okay, so here, here I am back again, and this is what I found uh, after um, about two weeks. Um, I basically put it under the microscope again, and Iolosoma, that's the name of this worm here. Yeah, it's a very common worm. I already made several videos um, with this worm, but not only that, there were also some some rotifers in in the sample here um, as well, yeah, floating around, and some interesting yeah other single-celled microorganisms, which are, they appear to be ciliates over here, yeah, and uh, yeah, have a nice little uh, droplet uh, shape. It did not uh, yeah look under in my identification book yet, so maybe if some of you uh, know what it is, uh, of course, uh, please post it in the comments. Yeah, I sh actually, I should <laughs> check my identification book here. Yeah, but these were not the only ones. Um, yeah, again, here is uh, the the worm here. Um, some nematode worms. Um, these are also quite uh, quite commonly found. Um, and uh, yeah, they like to attach themselves uh, to the surface. And this one here is a flagellate and a rotifer. The, so the top one that's a flagellate. You see this long, a second one here. This long flagellum. This this long extension. Yeah, it's a whip-like extension and it's uh, moving um, along using this flagellum. So it's kind of pulling the cells along. Yeah, and this large central oval-shaped round thing in the center. That's also a, a, a rotifer. Here again, Iolosoma. Um, yeah, the worm. They have a remarkable ability to regenerate. If you split them in half, uh, then yeah, of course, uh, the two halves are able to continue to survive. And uh, again, here, this here is now with a slightly different setting, different magnification again. And you see not only the larger cells, but there are also a, a variety of smaller cells also uh, moving around here. Yeah? Here again, yeah, the worm. So there is a quite a big uh, biodiversity here. Um, and I was uh, quite happy, uh, happy with that. And uh, yeah, which was kind of surprising here, Rotifer in, in, in big, yeah, uh, which was kind of surprising because I did not really have very high expectations of this uh, water sample. Um, but it was also one of those water samples which did not decompose. I had problems with the other water samples that they started to decompose. And one of the reasons is, um, is uh, that um, I, um, yeah, the other water samples, I used too much water. So it became anaerobic, lack of oxygen. Here, that's phase contrast. Again, you see the flagellate uh, with the, the, the nicely shaped flagellum. And here you see the, the uh, Iolosoma worm, which is starting to reproduce asexually. You see there's a second worm growing right in the middle of the body. Yeah? Here again, yeah, the flagellate yeah. it's with this whip-like uh, extension, which pulls along the cell. Yeah? Quite, uh, quite, uh, quite nice uh, concerning the biodiversity. Yeah. Okay, the video now starts to loop again. Um, yeah, before I give it a star rating, I just want to, uh, to show you where this place was because I was actually in Google Maps able to find the very place uh, that uh, yeah um, I collected this specimen from. And here, even in Google Maps, you're able to see those green spots on the water is algae floating around. So it actually shows that the water uh, seems to be fairly clean here um, because uh, it does promote uh, the growth of, of, of microorganisms here. And uh, not not only bacteria. Yeah, a Google a Google Maps boat. I also didn't know that they actually was taking pictures here and here. Um, yeah, that's the bridge that you could see. Um, and uh, here on the side, this, uh, these are the stairs that I went down. Okay. Yeah. So I was able to identify the place again in Google Maps. Here. Here we go. Okay. Well, how many stars? Um, yeah. I decided uh, to give it three stars. I was very happy with this uh, specimen. Three stars out of three. Um, as we all know that uh, this is probably not the original um, concentration of microorganisms that we normally see because uh, during the course of the two weeks where I kept the water sample, um, where I carried it around over the holidays, of course, there's always a progression of different species. So some um, species start to adapt better to the new environment and start to reproduce. But as I mentioned, um, uh, because I, list, I li used so little water and so there was a lot of air um, above uh, the, the water sample and therefore 
the specimen did not uh, go anaerobic, so there was always enough oxygen present. And place the tube also of course into the light um, so there was photosynthesis going on and oxygen production and it's really important that you maintain high oxygen concentration in the tube otherwise all of those interesting microorganisms they start to, to you know to die off yeah so if you want to see how i actually put them under the microscope and um, in my other channel there is a live stream that i made um where i put exactly those specimens under the microscope so if you're able if you're interested in in, in actually seeing uh, that then i I put a link uh, below into the description, then you can actually see how I, during a live stream in my other channel, I actually observed them microscopically. Yeah, I think uh, for today, this is uh, going to be it. Um, again, I will, of course, continue um, my holiday microscopy. Uh, so there are plenty of other uh, places as well uh, that I'm going to post the video on. And I'm going to, of course, always give it a star rating. Well, if you like these type of videos, uh, yeah please do consider subscribing. There's also this bell, this bell notification so that uh, you're always informed when I upload a new video. But uh, yeah, for today, I just want to say happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.